the company had been incorporated as High Toro. We sat down and said, that's not going to fly. So I never did understand why High Toro got selected. It may have been just a shelf company where they just went in and said, we need a corporation. They said, here, here's High Toro for you. How do you like that? Fine. Um, we sat down and it was Dave and the other guys in sales at that time, myself, and I think Jay, and we went through name after name after name after name after name and came up with, originally came up with Amigo and then said, no, Amigo's not right. We need to be a little different. So we came up with Amiga. Well, Jay was not terribly excited about that, but he came to like it after a period of time. Once the computer project got going, at that time of, you know, if you remember, you know, we were obviously here in California. The big guy in computers at that time was Apple and they had announced the Lisa. And so somewhere along the line, we all thought, well, this has got to be a girl's name for the computer. Lorraine was picked because that's Dave Morse's wife's name. And there was literally discussions going on that when we launched it, it would be called the Lorraine. But that got squashed because almost all of us said, no, it's good for a working title, but it's not something we're going to go to market with. Uh, in order to really hit the market, it needed to be called the Amiga something. And the Amiga Lorraine just didn't wash with us. Okay, the gap in the market back in those days. Um, well, you had this whole crew of PC clones out there that were really only competing pretty much on the base of price. Apple had the Apple III in the market. The Lisa was coming into the market in the step between a, a purely business machine and your Commodore 64s, which were primarily just computer-based gaming machines. Our concept was to create a computer that would, again, give people things that were fun to do other than just games, make great games at the same time, but have the computing horsepower that it could fundamentally do just about anything. And Dave and Jay and all of us kind of saw the whole music thing, video thing, even back then as becoming more and more important, it kind of boiled down to the the concept of, okay, what can we do that will make this exciting, that will make people want to buy this computer rather than just play games? And uh, at that time, just about everything there was on a computer boiled down to playing games. And if you didn't have a good game, you didn't last very long as a computer. And like I say, the IBM side of things, the PC, even the PC Junior at that time, they were so purely business, they couldn't play decent games at all. I mean, you look at the architecture Commodore 64, it was a game machine with a keyboard. That's it. And our approach was to kind of be totally revolutionary. And I think without a question of a doubt, at the time, it was revolutionary. We chose to do things in hardware that our guys were trying to do in software. So performance-wise, when we started showing this thing around, People couldn't believe that there weren't all kinds of tricks being played. And, you know, it boiled down to no tricks, folks. This is the real stuff.